Taking a bold step to counter the government's narrative, a group of activists hacked China's state-controlled television signal in March of 2002. The group's determination and defiance is the subject of the film Eternal Spring. Joining us to talk more about this is filmmaker Jason Loftus. Good morning, Jason. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, this is uh, a... Uh, a, a, a little known historical fact that I think a lot of people, unless they deep dive, don't know about it. Can, can you give us some information first? Sure. Yeah, it's a dramatic event. I mean, we came across it because we were working with the artist uh, at the center of this film, Dashong, on a kung fu video game. Uh, and just learning the story that was involved and how he had to flee his home. So, so Falun Gong, for those uh, people may have seen them sometimes protesting outside of Chinese consulates and other locations, but not really known sort of the background on the group. It's a Chinese type of meditation. It looks a bit like yoga, slow moving exercises. This kind of thing was popular and even endorsed by the authorities in China for a period of time uh, up until the late 90s. But Falun Gong became by far the most popular of these Qigong exercises. And because it maintained a sort of um, spiritual or philosophical component to it, sort of in a Buddhist tradition, uh, I think it was seen as threatening to the Chinese authorities. Uh, the communist regime in China, of course, officially atheist and, and has consistently sort of restricted and repressed religions in China. So I think the, the widespread growth of Falun Gong um, was a concern and they banned it. And people who continued, who would benefited from it, wanted to continue to practice, they were thrown into labor camps and prisons. And the Chinese government, to justify the repression, had this sort of constant onslaught of misinformation and propaganda about the group. And so the story really centers around the efforts to counter that. So the group, the individuals would hand out sort of leaflets and stuff that they had made to say, no, this is what we're about. It's not what the Chinese government is saying. Um, but it was very difficult um, because they were constantly being detained, uh, arrested and such. So a group of people in the city in northeast China called Changchun, they hatched a plan to climb the television poles uh, with wire cutters and a home DVD player and basically a homemade video and take over the airwaves in prime time. And this was absolutely unprecedented. It was a crazy sort of unprecedented heist story. And it interrupted the, uh, the monopoly on control of information that the Chinese government had had to sort of shine a light on the repression that they had been facing. Uh, Eternal Spring is now getting ready for its, uh, its wide U.S. theatrical release. You've, you've been in, in several uh, festivals already. What's the reaction so far? Oh, it's been, it's been really heartwarming and, and uh, remarkable, really. I mean, first, as a filmmaker, obviously, you appreciate it when people are connecting with your work. I mean, the film has 15 festival prizes now in seven months. It just seems everywhere we go every couple of weeks, there's another honor and recognition. Uh, but for me, it's also because, you know, without giving up too, giving up too much that's in the film, there's individuals who don't survive. Um, they made a, a remarkable sacrifice to speak up in the face of injustice, and we're happy that their story can continue on. Um, and, and how long did it take you to put it together? This one stretched over close to six years. Um, it's, it's partly because of the unique nature of the project. We wanted the artistic process to be part of the story that we were telling. This is uh, you know, a traumatic story that this artist, uh, it's, it's impacted his life. It's uprooted him from his home. He has all this longing and nostalgia for his home. And he wants to understand this event. He meets the lone surviving TV hijacker who's escaped China. So we get this whole insight into this heist story. And we're looking at it through the lens of this artist. Well, congratulations. Uh, the movie is Eternal Spring, and it is meant to be seen on the big screen. So we encourage all of our viewers to go see it. Um, congratulations, Jason. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. My pleasure.